Combat, Volume 1. This is your review for you. Good day. My name is Joe. Today we'll be going over a combat and how it plays solo. Now combat is a solo game of, of, of fighting on the ground, man to man combat of war in the 20th century. Uh, you're going to be sneaking around doing specific missions on a squad based level. So you're going to have about maybe seven to 10 uh, soldiers on your side that you'll be infiltrating the, the German forces, uh, trying to take over encampments and buildings and trying to score the best at the end of the game. So let's see a little bit more how to play. So as I said before, combat is a squad-based game. So it all starts on the setup. You're going to have an area that you can set up your squad. It's going to tell you what members you get to use. And what's neat is each one of these members has their own little name on it. So you really feel good when you're, you're moving Corporal Thomas around the board or, you know, Private Connor. And, you know, he's, he may not be as good at shooting, but he's a medic that can help in the field. So these all have names. And what's interesting too is the, the German soldiers actually have names, so it just gives you that kind of personal feel, that XCOM feel as you go through this game. But you'll be setting up the board. Most of the enemies on these will be flipped face down because first you'll have to spot them and then you'll have a, an objective you want to complete for the game. So you're going to start off with your hands of cards and this is going to be where you're actually going to start off the initiative. And what's interesting about this game is uh, there are turns in the game, but they're broken down into these impulses. So on the squad base level, these guys are acting on their impulses. You know, what are they going to do, you know, for four impulses in a row? You know, when they sneak impulse one, they may not do anything. Number two, they'll move a little bit slower and, and so forth. So each one of these little chits on it is going to have an action and you'll have to set those up before the turn starts. So once you know the uh, the turn order, each squad member is going to get their own um, impulse for the turn, their own action for the turn, which they'll happen on certain points. Then the enemies will do the exact same, at least the ones you can see, and you're going to go from there. So as you go across these boards, there's a lot of, you know, it's a, it's a 2D map. However, it's represented in the 3D space. There may be hills, there may be trees, there may be uh, bushes you need to hide behind. Uh, I have this little string here so I can measure the, uh, I can look at the, you know, the angles that are needed, the height elevations. You're trying to sneak around, like I said, squad based combat. Uh, everything's on the, the D10 system. So once a soldier has, has done their, their impulse, if they can see an enemy soldier, but and they're unknown yet, they're going to roll and compare to uh, their, their value, their little squad value and see if they can see somebody. And then there's also shooting in the game where you'll be, you know, depending on the distance, depending on the guns, there's a whole, you know, slew of how far you are away, what kind of guns are you shooting, you know, at the enemy, all while trying to keep the objective in mind. So it's played over a course of so many turns, and each turn's broken down into these impulses, like I said, and at the end of the turn, you get all the, the chits, and you'll start the turn again. So hopefully, you can kind of go through that. There's a morale system in the game, there's a wounding system in the game, uh, there's just a whole bunch of little things. You know, throwing a grenade can be brutal but if you take out somebody as there as they you know just pulled the pin and you you take them out and they drop the grenade it can be super deadly so a lot to unpack with this game but that's just a short overview of this game now see a little bit more what I thought about it so the components in this game oof, it took me a long time to get all these chits and sorted and you know I haven't even really uh, had to use them all yet there's just so there's so many, you know, there's so much, you know, when a grenade drops, the, the smoke appears, so you need to put the smoke counters on there. Um, there's different morale, so every time somebody takes morale, you got to put the chits on. There's a lot of components to this game. The rules are a little bit thick. This is my first kind of delve into the true war game, board game, um, you know, side of the hobby. And let me tell you, not everything is intuitive. They did a pretty good job in the rule book, about 80%. Um, but you need that la you need to play the game to get that last little bit. You know, a lot of the spotting, the the sights, um, 
you know, are just a little bit tough. The rule book itself is, is okay. They probably could have done better, but it is a lot to this game. Now the references, I will say, they gave you great references, you know, from the turn order to what guns to, you know, spotting the enemy. And this kind of, uh, bleeds into the thematic of it really helps with these reference sheets getting a sense of theme as you play the game. Let's talk about setup and table size. Setup, this is the game you need to either have on your table or have a super expedited way to get this uh, to the table because this is not a game that you can just take out of the box and be playing within 15 to 20 minutes. There's so many chits to keep in mind. Um, there's there's your chits, which are green, the gray chits for the Germans. Uh, you gotta set up the board, uh, set up the map, get everything ready and organized because during the game, when it says, you know, a sneak five, which means it what direction the enemy's gonna sneak, you need to find that, that chit. You know, there's one through uh, six on these and put it near that soldier and you have to do it for every soldier. So it really is uh, kind of kind of unique. Um, every battle is going to be different, but uh, the organization is key. So setup is going to take you a while. Uh, table size, uh, it doesn't take up as much table size as I thought it would, but it still takes up a good amount. So you need a decent amount of space. Probably a, a, a three by four wouldn't hurt uh, to house this game. So let's talk about the gameplay. So, as I said, this is my first foray into the 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 board game war game hobby. Um, I played Mr. President that was pretty close to the war game, but this is a true line of sight, uh, rolling dice, a uh, chit you know, management, a squad management, um, objective based. There's so much to this game. They give you a scenario book, which I think at least has 13 scenarios in it. There's plenty with volume one, volume two has plenty more, but the gameplay is really thematic. Now, the problem is it's thick. So as my first go into the, the, the war game side of the hobby, you know, having to think about uh, line of sight, you know, on these different elevations on this 2D map was kind of tough. Um, missing, you know, with some of these dice just feels kind of tough when you think you should hit. It kind of gives you that XCOM feel. If you guys ever played the, um, uh, the video game XCOM, squad based maneuverability, trying to outmaneuver the enemy and trying to get the best result you can. If an enemy's out in the open, take advantage of it because you don't know if, if next turn they're going to be in cover or not. You have to manage your own people. You have to predict a little bit what's going to happen on the turn. Remember, it happens in impulses. So, you know, you may not be able to shoot until impulse number two. Well, if that enemy moves on impulse number one out of sight or something of that sort, well, that's that's just how it, that's how it goes. So there's all these different things to keep track of. You know, do you conserve your own troops? Uh, you can run out of ammo. You can get badly wounded. Your morale may drop. And so if somebody comes charging, charging at you, your morale is going to be a little bit lower and your, your squad, you know, score is going to be a little bit lower and harder to fight back. So many things to keep a track in this game. Uh, my biggest kind of slow down really was the line of sight uh, on the different elevations. They have some great references online, but that's just very hard to, to wrap my mind around for someone who isn't as experienced in the war game board game hobby. Um, however, this game is super thematic. It's really neat. This is actually one of the smallest boards. This is mission number three. Uh, this is one of the smaller boards. A lot of the other boards are super large, and especially when you get into uh, past the intro scenarios, it really can start to expand and grow out. References are great. Um, different weapons, throwing grenades. It's just, there's so many things. There's so many little things that this game does well, but it is a little bit of a hurdle to get over the rules. So super thematic and just so much fun and it's, it's just so interesting setting up for for a target you don't know exist only for it you reveal it and it may be like a dummy you know uh, there's just so much uh, interesting things about this game but like i said the rules really tough to get over so is this game good for you and 
I really like this game. I'll probably check out some more war games, um, probably on the solo side. I don't think my my wife would ever really play these kind of games uh, with me. This is going to be very hard to get back to the table. That's going to be my only really big uh, gripe about this game is getting this back to the table. I'm going to learn all the rules, set up everything again, organize everything in a in a pretty quick manner so when i play everything you know flows well the game itself is very good but getting this back to the table is going to be very hard um you know i don't play war games often we play a lot of you know a lot of euro games a lot of cooperative games all these different types this is a rule set that won't always stick with me so it is a good game. It's a great solo game if you have space to leave it out for a while. But getting the setup, um, even if you have to put it up and bring it back out, may be a little bit tough unless you have organizers. Um, but the rules, if you haven't played it in a few months, are going to be kind of tough to get back. Great game, though. I really enjoyed uh, my time with combat. Uh, I, I will continue. I really... Um, like the direction of compass games um, just thank you for making games like this you know these are games that are that are unique and fit to a certain audience and i can i really respect uh, compass games for for having these historical war games and really uh, filling that niche in the board gaming hobby i have a a immense amount of respect for war games now and i i really enjoy it now, as far as staying in the collection, it will stay, but it's going to be very tough to get back to the table for a, you know, medium, you know, normal board gamer uh, like myself. So uh, really like it, but not for everyone unless this may be your first step into the war game hobby. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the review and until next time.